Hey guys, today I want to show you how I upgraded my uh, Game Boy Advance to a backlit screen. And the process is actually pretty simple and can be completed in less than 30 minutes with the right tools. Um, the GBA is one of the easiest systems to take apart and fix like most other Game Boy systems. Uh, the Game Boy Advance was always my favorite Game Boy because of the form factor. It was a landscape handheld that wasn't too small like the Game Boy um, Micro that I used to have and also in comparison to the SP model I found it uncomfortable to hold for long periods of time. Now the original Game Boy Advance was always my preferred choice but it did lack a backlit screen. So the backlit Game Boy Advance mods uh, were always available for many years but it wasn't until like maybe recently that it was affordable. Previously you had to get a backlighted screen from a donor Game Boy Advance SP and but now there there's alternatives for less than fifty dollars so Banggood sent me this for review so check out the links if you want to pick one up so in this video I'll go through the steps of modifying the case to fit the backlit screen as well as soldering the power wire the backlit LCD kit comes with two screwdrivers a cable adapter and the screen itself there are two versions of the kit you have to make sure that you buy the right type for your Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advances come with either a 32 pin or a 40 pin connector for the LCD. And the kits that have the LCD itself, the LCD screen is the same. The only difference is really the adapter that it comes with. Either it's a 40 or 32 pin and it really depends on the Game Boy Advance that you have. And you can tell by a few numbers that's written above the battery compartment on the Game Boy Advance's uh, micro, uh, motherboard. Just make note of the very first digit and disregard the rest. So if it starts with a zero, it's a 40 pin or type A. And if it starts with a one, it's a 32 pin and you'd buy the type B. So order the correct one for your Game Boy Advance and you should be good to go. Besides the LCD kit, you may want to buy yourself a brand new Game Boy Advance shell if yours is kind of beat up. This way you keep your original shell safe and you just modify the replacement shell. So using the included screwdrivers, take the seven screws out of the back of the Game Boy Advance and you should be able to lift it off quite easily. And don't forget the screw that's in the battery compartment. So these are the locations that have screws in it. Most of them are tri-wings with one Phillips. After lifting off the back cover, there are two other screws you need to remove which are on the sides of the Game Boy Advance. Before you can take out the circuit board completely, you need to remove this ribbon cable here, which connects the old LCD to the motherboard of the Game Boy Advance. So just uh, click these tabs here and carefully remove it. And to take out the old LCD screen, all you have to do is basically twist the case a bit. If the screen is held in with some adhesive tape, and as you twist it, it should start loosening up and eventually it will pop out. Uh, just go slow and try not to break the case and uh, just keep on twisting it and it should come out. And with the shell you need to cut away some of the plastic so that the screen will fit properly uh, since, it, since the LCD screen is a bit thicker, thicker than the original non-lit LCD. And I initially cut the plastic on the spare green shell uh, but as I was filming it, uh, the, the video was rather poor, so I redid it with the original silver shell. So for the rest of the video, if you notice why the, sh the shell turned from green to silver to green, it was because some of the original footage was, wasn't good enough, so I had to redo it again. So hopefully um, that doesn't confuse you. To cut away at the plastic, I used a pair of wire cutters. And uh, the plastic is actually pretty soft, so it doesn't take a lot of effort to cut it. Some people use razors or, or Dremel tools to cut the plastic, but the wire cutters work well for me. You don't have to be perfect since uh, you won't see it. Just cut the plastic as close as possible to the surface. And I didn't have to sand it or anything. And in this picture, I marked out the areas where I cut off all the plastic using a Sharpie. So this gives you an idea of what you need to cut away and make sure that you get it as close as possible to the surface. This way that uh, your LCD screen will have more room. Like I mentioned earlier, the uh, new screen is a bit thicker, so space will be tighter. 
the adapter's flat wire will have to be placed and folded so that it won't interfere when closing the case. For the thickest part of the adapter, I actually tried to place it between the cartridge connector and that chip. I then used some tape to hold it in place so that when I place it, it doesn't move around. And for this portion right here, you want to fold it and then hold it down with some tape. Next, it's time to solder the red wire to the circuit board. Pre-tin this area with some solder, and this way it's, it'll be a lot easier for you to solder on the red wire. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, solder right in this area. Unfortunately, I didn't notice my hand blocking the view, so I didn't really film this part where I was soldering the actual wire. So sorry about that. Um, you basically solder the red wire to this point on the circuit board, and this is what powers the LCD screen. Put it back together by doing the reverse of taking it apart. You can install a nice glass screen too if you want to splurge a little. So after 15 years, my Game Boy Advance finally has a backlit screen. Since the Game Boy Advance can play the whole Game Boy library from Game Boy to Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance cartridges, it basically replaces my previous favorite um, handheld, which was the GB Boy Color, which was uh, which is which was a Chinese kind of clone of the Game Boy, and it played Game Boy and Game Boy Color cards. The backlit kits are affordable and relatively easy to install, requiring very little soldering. If you want to pick up a new shell or the backlight, check out the links in the description. Anyways, that's it for this video. Comment, like, share, or subscribe, and uh, you'll see me next time. So now I'll run through a couple of demos of the screen in action. It actually looks a little better than what you're seeing right now. Um, I'm filming this through my camera, and it does. It kind of makes it look a little bit. Doesn't really look like this in real life, so. Um, it actually looks a lot better than when I'm looking at it. So you're seeing a lot of compression and you see some lines and stuff. But in real life, take my word for it, it actually looks pretty good. And the camera picks up a lot of the bright spots around the edges. But this isn't the case when I'm actually looking at it myself. What was interesting as well was that it wasn't too bright. Because I thought if I played it in complete darkness, like when I'm in my bedroom, the screen would be too bright and overpowering but luckily that wasn't the case. So now I'm gonna test it with Shantae, one of my favorite Game Boy Color games in uh, with Daylight. And this is by Window, and you can see that it's still um, pretty decent in terms of the vibrance and the brightness. Unfortunately, it's not really sunny where I live right now, so I'm not really able to test it out in like full sunlight. And most uh, backlit displays don't handle the bright sunlight very well. In fact, you may not even be able to see it. 